So let me give a quick introduction. I'm very happy to introduce my uh, Monique uh, Tayo. Hmm? <laughs> Not too bad. <laughs> um, who is at uh, Inria in Nancy and uh, who has uh, been in various uh, other places, including uh, Inria at Fiancé Poly, and uh, who has uh, lots of um, connections to computational geometry, including having been on the steering committee for some years and uh, also involved in uh, Seagull projects and a lot of other things. And uh, I think um, I would regrettably have to take the entire hour listing her accomplishments. So I would have to stop and let her speak. So go ahead, please. Oh, thank you for the introduction, Boris, and uh, thanks to the organizers for the invitation. That's at least a good point of the pandemic that we see faces uh, maybe more often. <laughs> and so, so I'm going to present uh, some work more or less in progress about the flipping uh, geometric triangulation on hyperbolic surfaces. So this is joint work with uh, Vincent Després, Loïc Dubois, who are here, I think, uh, on the Zoom, uh, and also Benedict Kolbe and Jean-Marc Schlenker. Oh. So, yes, I don't know how to... Ah, my slides. Ah, okay, it comes out. Uh, yeah. Okay, sorry. So just for the context, uh, so you all know about the Dolonet triangulation in the Euclidean plane. So it's the combinatorial triangulation of the sphere. Uh, by uh, adding a vertex at infinity and um, replacing so all uh, the, the half planes here become uh, similar to empty uh, disks so in any dimension. So you all know about that. So my talk will be centered around the two uh, algorithms first uh, and uh, seeing the differences and how they can uh, uh, extend uh, to surfaces. So in R2, so this is all things that you all know, but just for the recall, so Boyer's algorithm, uh, it's incremental. So if you have a triangulation, you want to introduce a new point or to insert a new point. So you first find all the clear triangles that are said to be in conflict, that is the triangles whose uh, circumscribing disk contains uh, the new point. So these triangles form a, a, a shape that is a, actually a topological disk. And you can update the triangulation by just uh, uh, inserting uh, edges from the new points to uh, the boundary of this uh, kind of hole, uh, this, uh, this topological disk. So we like it. Uh, so you mentioned Seagal, uh, Boris mentioned Seagal. Uh, so he, we like it because it's uh, in practice very efficient. Uh, and uh, most of it, it, it allows for a, a very clean uh, implementation. The code, you can make the code clean by uh, uh, separating the combinatorics from the geometry in, in a nice way. So it, we like it also for practical reasons. So you also have uh, the famous uh, Lawson's uh, flip algorithm. So here, you're given the triangulation. You want, again, to insert uh, a, a point. You start by splitting the triangulation uh, that contains the new point in T3. And then uh, uh, you check the edges of the, each of the new triangles. So you check uh, the disks, the circumscribing disks of all of the two uh, uh, triangles adjacent incident to, to the new uh, edge. And you check if they are empty or not. And if they are em not empty, you need to flip the edge. And uh, so you check all the edges like that. And then you propagate. You again have new edges and you check them. And if needed, you flip further. So this all we, all also works incrementally in any dimension. Uh, this was uh, just for the history. This was uh, what was used in Seagal uh, in earlier times in 2D, but uh, it does not give such a nice code and, uh, and it's much harder to implement in, uh, in practice in uh, higher dimensions. So 
in practice, we prefer boyers. But here you see that uh, we have other reasons on surfaces to prefer to flip algorithm. Now I will uh, just define uh, what we consider, which kind of surfaces we consider. So we first have uh, uh, the, the flat torus, which can be seen uh, as uh, the quotient of R2, the Euclidean plane, under the action of Z2. So here, uh, and Z2 can have, uh, can be given by the unit uh, uh, vector and uh, another vector. In higher genus, uh, uh, here the surface can be seen uh, as the, uh, the, the quotient of the hyperbolic plane under the action of a group, which is a discrete group of uh, orientation preserving isometries uh, of uh, the uh, hyperbolic plane. And uh, it's uh, isometric to the fundamental group uh, of the surface. So here, uh, the, there are several uh, uh, important differences uh, with respect to the case of the flat torus. So G is not a billion, which raises some difficulties. Uh, it, it's interesting. And just uh, so we will consider for H2 the Poincaré disk model. Uh, and uh, so the universal cover uh, in uh, genus one of the flat torus is R2, the Euclidean plane, whereas uh, in the hyperbolic case, it's uh, H2. And uh, we denote uh, the projection uh, from the universal cover to the surface uh, by uh, pi. So this is the general uh, definition that we will use. So concretely, a uh, more intuitive way. So the flat torus can be seen as uh, uh, what you get topologically by identifying uh, the opposite sides uh, of a parallelogram. And the universal covering space is uh, infinitely many copies uh, of this uh, parallelogram. And uh, so what we uh, call a Boulogne triangulation of, of the surface, uh, it's actually the projection of uh, the infinite uh, uh, Boulogne triangulation of the leaves of the points in the universal covering space. So here uh, we have points uh, in a square. So here the flat torus is defined by a square to um, the two uh, perpendicular vector unit vectors. And so each point uh, has uh, infinitely many leaves. Uh, and uh, so we have a periodic triangulation. So each triangle like uh, this purple one uh, has infinitely many copies. And uh, the Dolone triangulation is actually just what you get with only one uh, lift of each of the triangles. And you have uh, adjacency relations uh, between uh, uh, triangles like this uh, represented for instance by this, uh, this arrow. And uh, so uh, you can see the same uh, for a uh, hyperbolic surface. So here in the very specific case of the Bolsa surface, given by uh, um, a regular hyperbolic octagon. So if you identify uh, uh, the opposite sides, so here are the sides with the same colors, you get a genus two surface with uh, those uh, curves on the surface of the of the, the, the genus two, yes, on the surface. Yes. And uh, so uh, the octagon is actually the Dirichlet domain, uh, which is uh, the cell of uh, here, the origin uh, in uh, the infinite set, the orbit of uh, the origin under the group, under the action of the group. So here it's a Voronoi cell. And all these octagons are uh, isometric. Uh, they are the same uh, on the surface. Uh, and, um, and so they tile, uh, the tile, the hyperbolic plane is tiled uh, by infinitely many copies uh, of this uh, octagon. And uh, so the dominant triangulation on this surface, uh, so it's similar to what we had uh, for the flat torus. So, so you're given uh, uh, some, a finite point set uh, in the octagon, and then you have infinitely many copies, and the triangulation, the Dolone triangulation, is this infinite uh, uh, tiling uh, of uh, the hyperbolic plane uh, by uh, triangles uh, like this, whose uh, circumscribing disk is empty, just like uh, in the Euclidean case. And uh, so, same picture as in the flat torus. So, you have, uh, if you take only one lift of each triangle, uh, 
so here in a specific uh, drawn in a specific way, but so you have uh, adjacency relations between triangles like here, this uh, orange uh, triangle, uh, orange arrow represents the adjacency between two triangles, which wraps around the surface. Okay, so this is a basic uh, definition. Then what uh, for the context? So can we uh, export, uh, extend uh, Boyer's algorithm to a surface? So in R2, the property of the whole, what you get when you remove uh, triangles in concrete, the important property is that this whole is topological disk. So it's also star-shaped uh, with respect to the new point, but it's a topological disk. So updating the triangulation is uh, just straightforward, just a combinatorial operation. But if you are on a surface, the set of triangles whose circumscribing disk contain uh, uh, the new point is not necessarily a topological disk. So you cannot just combinatorially uh, uh, create edges from the new point to the boundary of uh, the hole because you have multiple geodesics between uh, such two such points. So you, it's not purely combinatorial and you don't know how to update just simply. And what we could prove a few years ago with uh, several co-authors um, is that we have a sufficient condition that ensures uh, that it will work. Uh, so the condition is that the systole uh, of the surface is uh, uh, larger than twice the diameter, uh, not the diameter, but let me define. Um, so this delta Q is the diameter of the largest empty disk in the universal cover of uh, the, uh, the, the leaves of, uh, of the input point. So if you have this condition and the system is the length of the shortest non contractible curve on, uh, on the surface. So if you have this condition, you can ensure that uh, the hole is always a combinatorial uh, topological disk. In other words, you ensure that uh, uh, the triangulation is always uh, uh, a, uh, a simplicial complex. And uh, so this property will be uh, uh, preserved when you insert any new point. As long as you have this uh, condition at the beginning, you can insert more points and it would work. So this was what we had a few years ago. And uh, well, let me skip the proof, it's trivial. But uh, so the, the algorithm on the surface, uh, the idea in practice is just to find a set of what we call dummy points. So some points that satisfy the condition. And then uh, you can just uh, apply Boyer's algorithm on the surface. But in the end, you have those uh, additional points. So if possible, you try to remove them. So in practice, it works uh, quite well. Uh, and so we have uh, used uh, this uh, in Seagal uh, for uh, the flat torus. So first in 3D, because uh, we had uh, questions by astronomers about uh, having some software uh, to do that. And then in 2D, and uh, also more recently, uh, we have introduced a, a package for the Volza surface uh, based on this uh, idea. But uh, if you want to generalize to uh, more general surface, uh, then you get into trouble. So first, uh, simply mathematically, we don't know the system uh, of a generic surface. It's not a trivial uh, problem to compute it. Um, and uh, so this is uh, purely a mathematical problem, but it's really an obstacle. Huh? But also more on the computer science side, uh, uh, it's unclear how to actually compute such a set of points with uh, this property. And uh, in particular, in practice, uh, uh, you uh, get uh, trouble with uh, manipulations of high degree algebraic numbers. Uh, and in practice, this is really hard and it's really, uh, 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 really an obstacle to get some code uh, that works. So for the Bolza surface, uh, it's okay because the degree is not too high. Uh, we, can, uh, we can handle that. But uh, for higher uh, genus in particular, it's not trivial. And uh, so even uh, it's unclear how to get uh, bounds uh, on, on the number of points that are necessary to uh, satisfy this condition. We have bounds uh, 
Uh, we have obtained recently some bounds uh, for uh, very specific surfaces, uh, so what that we call the generalized bolsa, which means that they have the fundamental domain is a regular uh, uh, polygon uh, with uh, 4G sides, uh, where G is the genus. So it's it's very specific. And uh, even that, we cannot really implement that uh, because uh, the uh, algebraic numbers are really have a degree that is too high. So in practice, uh, we are not able to do much. But at least we have results, but uh, lots of uh, questions. So we have tried uh, another approach, still based on Boyer's algorithm, but it's, uh, it consists in computing uh, in the universal covering, so on lifted points. But of course, uh, lifted points, you have infinitely many. So then the question is, uh, how many points you need to, to get for each point on the surface, how many copies? And uh, so how far do you need to go? You have the fundamental domain, you, you can put uh, glue other fundamental domain, but how far? We need an in, a finite number of points and something that is not too high. And uh, this is not a, a trivial problem. So we managed to do that on the flat case. And uh, so we could show that we need only uh, uh, not more than uh, 13 uh, copies of each point, 13 copies of the fundamental domain. But in the hyperbolic case, it's much harder. So we obtained a, a bound on the combinatorial length of the Delaunay edges. So if you take an edge in the central look at this picture, even though it's flat. But if you take an edge uh, with a vertex in the central fundamental domain, you know that you are not going to traverse more than uh, 2G minus six copies uh, of the fundamental domain. But, uh, but then if you look at the total number of copies uh, of points, uh, the only bound uh, for the moment that we get is uh, in 12G to the 12G more or less. So it, it, it's quite high. So um, we still have hope to be able to do something like that, but uh, it's not an easy task. So we decided to look at uh, what we can do with the flip algorithm. So again, uh, if we look to the, the Euclidean plane, uh, so to recall, uh, so you, we, we cut, uh, we split the, the triangle into, uh, into three, and then we propagate uh, flips uh, if necessary. And so if we look at the surface, the idea is actually the same. Uh, just to define it, we can define the flip on the lift in the universal covering. Uh, so we lift uh, uh, two adjacent triangles, we lift the diagonal, and then we project back from the surface. So it works well, seen uh, at this level of detail, uh, it, it, it's really similar. And uh, so, but what I, I discussed so far is how to, incrementally uh, compute the Delaunay triangulation. And actually the result uh, in the plane uh, is stronger than that. So it is known, uh, so it was by uh, Ferran and uh, several authors uh, several years ago. It is known that the flip graph of triangulations is connected. So if you take any triangulation with n points and uh, you flip uh, edges, uh, so you only need uh, at most uh, n square flips to transform it into a Delaunay triangulation. So this is stronger than just incrementally com computing a, a triangulation. You take any triangulation and you transform it to a Delaunay triangulation. So yeah, two years ago, we proved uh, with uh, Jean-Marc Schlenker that uh, uh, if you take uh, uh, points on a surface this time, the flip graph of geometric triangulations is connected. So geometric triangulations is triangulation that can be embedded uh, with uh, geodesics uh, on the surface. And uh, so the, but this time the complexity is not only the N square, of course we get the same N square, but uh, we have uh, uh, also a, a term uh, that depends both on the genus and the quality of the triangulation in some sense. So we are going to the, the, the whole point of this uh, work uh, is uh, to, uh, to, the, to, to have uh, good properties on this uh, 
uh, function of the genus and the triangulation. So for this, uh, to define this, uh, define uh, the diameter, what we call it the diameter of a triangulation is the smallest possible diameter uh, that you can get uh, with a connected union of lists of the triangles. So the, you have, a, you have a, a choice. So this should be the smallest diameter. And so it's not uh, easy to get, uh, it's easy to define, but it's really not easy to, to, to uh, compute. And uh, then, uh, so we, we will prove uh, uh, a bound uh, on the, this uh, uh, function f of g of t in terms of this diameter. So first preliminary results. Huh? So we can see that uh, if you flip a triangulation on the surface, you, cannot you can never create an edge that is longer than twice this diameter. So just a quick proof. Uh, uh, this is a well-known construction, I think. So if you embed, uh, so, so you, you embed the, the hyperbolic plane, uh, the Poincaré disk model into a plane, uh, Z equals one uh, in R3. So this is uh, the disk, blue disk here is uh, uh, H2, the hyperbolic plane. And then you may, you, you do a stereographic projection uh, with respect to this sphere centered in uh, the origin and uh, with respect to the pole here. And so each point in H2 is mapped to a point on the sphere and H2 is mapped on this shape here, uh, the blue shape. Okay, so this is quite a known uh, construction. And uh, with, this, uh, uh, with this way of seeing, uh, uh, actually you can see a flip as follows. So you have uh, four points uh, on the sphere with this uh, projection. So four points on the sphere uh, and uh, an edge uh, can be seen uh, here. So it, it is uh, in 3D, an edge between two uh, 3D triangles. Um, and the flip actually consists by uh, looking at the tetrahedron that those uh, four points form. And you replace uh, this edge uh, uh, here, uh, red edge, oops by uh, the, the edge in front, the opposite edge on the tetrahedron. So in this way, each time you flip, uh, you get closer to the top, uh, uh, to, the, to, to this plane as uh, Z equal one, you, you, get, you go more and more uh, upwards. Uh, and in the end, uh, after you have uh, filled all those triangles, uh, you get a convex polyhedron. So this is a, a famous uh, uh, something known, well known that the Delaunay triangulation actually uh, boils down to a convex polyhedron uh, with this construction in uh, R3. And it shows on the way that an edge can never reappear because after it was flipped, it is inside this uh, uh, polyhedron. And uh, when getting more and more convex, it, it can never reappear on the boundary. So this is not new. So using this construction, we do the following. So if we assume that an edge in the triangulation uh, uh, is longer than this term two d of t, uh, so we take a fundamental domain that has diameter d of t. So again, we don't know how to construct that, but we know that it exists. So omega is this fundamental domain here. And uh, we take a lift of the edge, um, a lift E tilde uh, that is uh, uh, centered, that, whose midpoint lies inside omega. And then since we know that uh, omega has diameter d of t, it is included in, uh, in the disk here of radius d of t and centered at this midpoint of, uh, of the lift of E. So we have this picture, omega is contained in this disk. And if we look, so in R3, but we, uh, it's a cut here. So we have the inclusion of omega into D here. And then uh, we see the edge is longer. And uh, the fact uh, that the edge is longer means uh, that, uh, so D projects with the stereographic projection, it projects uh, on a circle, uh, on the sphere uh, that lies uh, 
in the intersection of a plane, denoted here as PD, with the sphere. And the fact that the edge is longer means that uh, it is lower. So in particular, the center V, the, 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 the midpoint V, lies be below PD. But uh, since uh, the triangulation in the edge is supposed to be convex uh, uh, on the sphere, uh, the point must be on, uh, above this. So we have a contradiction, and so we cannot have a, a longer edge. And uh, so it's easy in the flat torus to see that the, flat, the, the flip graph is connected by just counting uh, uh, some, the number of points in each, uh, in each triangle. So in, uh, if you take the lift in R2 of uh, the tr any triangulation T, you can count for, uh, for, for each, uh, it's not the lunet. So for each disk, you count the number of points in the disk. And since the disks are compact, uh, you have a number. And each time uh, it's easy to, to remind that, that when you flip uh, and you are more de lunet, you have the inclusion of the circles uh, uh, after the flip into the circles uh, before the flip, and you lose at least uh, two points. So the weight decreases by uh, at least two each time. So in the end, uh, it terminates necessarily and you get a, a connected graph. So this is easy in the flat case. Uh, maybe I'll skip uh, this proof. Uh, what time do you have? Uh, yes. Well, uh, so in the flat case, we can prove a bound uh, uh, on the number of flips uh, that are necessary to go to the Dolony triangulation, we choose like that, a constant that depends uh, on the torus, U is the vector of the lattice uh, here, uh, and uh, the square of the diameter and this n square that uh, has no question. And uh, so maybe I'll skip this proof to have more time to insist on the rest after, but the, okay, there's no miracle here. It's for the flat case, uh, it's, uh, it's relatively easy. The problem uh, when you want to do the same uh, for the uh, hyperbolic surface uh, is just that it does not work because uh, if you want to count the number of points in a disk that is not a Delaunay disk, uh, the disks are not always compact. So this uh, number can be infinite. So you need something compact if you want to, 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 to compute. But uh, so the thing that saves us is that what I said, that the edges that appear during the flip are always shorter than two uh, D of T. So you get something compact. The issue is that uh, the area of a hyperbolic disk uh, is uh, exponential. So you're not going to count, uh, I mean, uh, the, the bound uh, would be higher, but at least you have something compact on you can get an idea why it's, uh, it terminates, the flip uh, terminates. What is more tricky is uh, to prove uh, this uh, for the case of a hyperbolic surface. Uh, so we get uh, this function f that I, I showed uh, previously, uh, this function f of the genus and the triangulation is actually something like this, at least the bound is, uh, what we get is a constant that depends on the surface itself. And then uh, bound D of T to the CG minus four. So G is still the genus and this is N square. So we have uh, uh, proved uh, uh, a bound like this two years ago. And uh, so I'm not going to try to really prove it, just give you a few ingredients. Uh, and uh, so the idea is uh, that we need to count uh, all the possible edges that appear. So we need to count uh, all the non-homotopic simple paths uh, on the surface. And uh, so we actually reuse a proof uh, uh, that dates back uh, to uh, 70, uh, nine, uh, there was a proof that counts uh, the number of closed curves. But here uh, we need a path. So we proof and change it a bit uh, to a uh, uh, simple path. So the 
the idea is uh, the ingredient is here, this decomposition of the surface. So you take a surface, you decompose it into pairs of pants. And uh, so here you have uh, two pairs of pants that are glued and gamma is the common, uh, the common uh, cycle uh, uh, of those uh, two pa pairs of pants. And then you uh, kind of uh, define the uh, kind of uh, neighborhood uh, of this gamma. And, uh, and then uh, you define uh, some uh, curves uh, like this gamma prime and gamma second that are used to decompose, to cut the surface further so that you separate uh, uh, the four boundaries, uh, the four uh, other boundaries of the pairs of points here. So you have a decomposition of, of the surface here into small annu annuli uh, that are in blue and uh, what we call short pants. So the pants where we have removed uh, this uh, annuli. And then when you have uh, a pass, now a pass V1, V2, and uh, so the idea is uh, to look at intersections with all those curves uh, and uh, compute uh, a kind of a normal form uh, of this uh, homotopic to this path. And uh, so we can uh, decompose uh, the, the, the path into a first part uh, and then uh, a part W1, W2 where the WI are on some of the boundaries of these uh, annuli. And then you have uh, the rest for the endpoints. And uh, okay, and then you, we, we, we look at normal coordinates with respect to the short points. And uh, we get uh, uh, combinatorially things like that for the endpoints. So we need to consider the endpoints. So here is uh, the difference with the previous results uh, for close pass is that we need to have endpoints. And then uh, we count all the possible coordinates of possible paths. So instead, uh, so I think if I'm not mistaken, the, the bound for the closed, uh, closed curves was CG minus six in the exponent. And with what we have, we have CG minus four. So that's an idea just of the ingredients, but the proof is uh, relatively long and tricky. So I'm not going to go into the details. But then the question is whether this bound uh, is really tight or close to tight. Um, and uh, so at this point, uh, we decided to um, experiment. So to, to do some experiments to get an idea whether this bound uh, is realistic or, or, and the conclusion is that it, it looks uh, much too high. And uh, so I'll sketch how we perform the experiments. So we have several ingredients. The one, the main ingredient maybe is uh, given by a paper with, uh, by uh, Egon Dupuis, Boozer and uh, other people. And they, they show that uh, you can always define uh, any genus two. So uh, yes, I forgot to mention the, the experiments are only for genus two for the moment. And so they, they showed that you can always define uh, uh, such a genus two surface by a uh, symmetric octagon in which like for the Bolsa surface, you uh, pair opposite sides and you get uh, 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 this surface like that. And uh, so the condition is that the area of this uh, polygon should be four pi, which uh, boils down to uh, requiring that we actually have a surface, a smooth surface, that is uh, the sum of angles uh, here uh, uh, around uh, the vertex uh, is two pi. So all eight points of the octagon, all eight vertices uh, uh, are represent the same point on the surface. So this is an important ingredient. And then we can triangulate with only one point. We are interested in the dependency of uh, the complexity with respect to the diameter of the triangulation. The n square uh, number of points would, is uh, obvious. So we will try with triangulations with only one point, one vertex. Another ingredient is the data structure. So we use combinatorial maps like a kind of a half -head data structure. And uh, in the data structure, we actually will compute directly on the surface. So at the beginning, uh, we define the octagon uh, 
in the hyperbolic plane. But uh, as soon as we have initialized uh, the data structure, we will forget about the coordinates of the points. Uh, and we actually only maintain the cross ratios uh, of, of each edge defined like this. So the U's, uh, the UIs are uh, the complex numbers that define uh, the points uh, in the hyperbolic plane. And uh, but so we initialize like this, and then we will do flips and forget about the U, the, the, the coordinates of the points. We just maintain the cross ratios and we, we can do that compute after the flip the new cross ratios uh, based on the previous one. So this can be maintained. But we soon, uh, soon uh, run into really serious problems that uh, we still have algebraic numbers. I already mentioned this issue uh, for the other algorithm, but we uh, reached the same issue. Uh, so we tried, but uh, we, we really cannot do much. So the idea is that we proved a density result showing that given uh, some admissible octagon, did not redefine, but okay, given some admissible octagon, we can find a, a rational admissible octagon, which is the uh, real and uh, imaginary parts of the complex numbers are all rational. And so the, these uh, rational numbers are all close to uh, the previous ones. So we can prove that and it's really constructive. So it's really something that from the initial octagon. So this allows us uh, to do all the computations with only a rational number. So in practice, it makes a huge difference. And uh, then uh, since we need to, uh, we want to evaluate the complexity with respect to the diameter, we need to construct triangulations with larger diameters. And this is not that easy. And so we use the twists. And uh, the idea is that, so here, if you have uh, subjections on all these parts, uh, so it, it, it can be welcome. So our intuition is that uh, the, actually the structure of the flip graph uh, is more or less similar to the structure of the mapping class group of the surface. So here, the surface is a topological surface, not a geometric surface. So the mapping class group is the set of homeomorphisms up to isometry of the topological surface. So this is the definition. And uh, Thurston's, uh, Thurston gave a classification of this uh, mapping class group and uh, into reducible uh, uh, elements that fix, uh, have uh, one uh, fixed curve and pseudo anosov elements that don't have any fixed curve and also periodic, I put that into, into gray because they don't have a, a, an effect on the length of curves. So here, in the reducible elements are then twists. So you, on the surface, they are defined by a curve and each curve that cuts this curve C after the twist is, uh, so you twist the surface like uh, in this picture and the length of the blue curve uh, gets a constant, which is the length of C. So each time you, uh, for each crossing with C, you add uh, the length. And the pseudo onus of elements multiply the length of each curve by a constant. And the periodic ones don't really modify the length, so we are not interested uh, in them. And uh, it was proved, it is known that this uh, mapping class group uh, is generated by a finite set of then twists. Um, and so if you compose uh, those uh, uh, generators in a random way, it's like uh, uh, make, performing a random walk in the mapping class group. And it was shown also that the, you reach, if you randomly compose, you reach uh, pseudo anosov elements uh, with asymptotic probability one. So asymptotic is important because of course uh, in experiments, we are not going to do asymptotic things. Everything in the world uh, we can reach is finite, but still. So the intuition, so again, uh, if you have, uh, uh, you can uh, give us more light on this, uh, it, it will be welcome. But uh, the intuition also comes from uh, a paper by Mark Bell, uh, a recent paper that uh, showed that uh, uh, 
all this, uh, the mapping class group have some effect on the flip graph of topological triangulations. So again, SG here for the mapping class group is a topological uh, surface. And, um, and so he showed some exponential conversions of, uh, of uh, his algorithm. So this is all the intuition. So here I insist on the fact that our problem is different. So first, uh, we don't have a, a topological uh, surface. We have uh, some geometry. We are not going to perform anything asymptotic, as I said, because uh, our algorithm must be finite. Uh, and also what Mark Bell wanted to have uh, is to reduce the number of crossings with a fixed curve of, of each of the, of, yeah, the number of crossings of these triangulations with a, a fixed curve. Whereas here, we don't know uh, the goal. The goal is Delaunay, but it's not in terms of uh, intersections or whatever with this given fixed curve. So we don't know how far we are from the goal. And we don't know the homotopy classes of goal edges. So our problem is uh, well defined in the sense that it's Delaunay, but not in the same terms. And still the hope, and you will see that it works, uh, that we still, uh, even though it's very different uh, in nature, we can still observe something that is more or less similar. So just report on the experiment. So we, for each uh, our, our uh, surfaces, they are defined by uh, octagons and we twist them along side pairings like this. The curve C that is used for the twist is a side pairing. So you replace this octagon on the left by uh, the one on the right uh, with this uh, new copy here of the other half. And then you get the same, it's still the same surface, it's a twist of the surface, but you extend the diameter, you enlarge the diameter. And uh, so we run uh, uh, experiments with a power sequence of twists. So we take always the same twist and apply it again and again. And also random sequences of such twists. So we mix them uh, randomly. And we do that a lot uh, on a large number of uh, surfaces and problems. And uh, surprisingly, so even though I said, uh, uh, <coughs> we have something that is not asymptotic, we can still observe something that is a linear behavior in the number of flips with respect to the diameter that we obtain. And uh, so it seems that flips can untwist the triangulation by a constant number of flips for each iteration of the script. So, uh, so you here you have a straight lines uh, that are each for a given uh, octagon. On a, a, a given surface and a, a given sequence of, uh, of flips. Uh, so power uh, here, power of uh, this, always the same twist. And uh, now if we do random uh, uh, combination of twists, we see that uh, we have a logarithmic behavior of the number of flips with respect to the diameter. So here we also have uh, more or less lines uh, for each uh, uh, experiment. And uh, so here in uh, the X coordinate is the logarithmic uh, of the diameter. And uh, so we see that it looks uh, as efficient as uh, uh, what Mark Bell did, even though our problem is, uh, as I said, of different nature. So this was a, a surprise when we saw the curves, uh, we were quite surprised that it still works. Uh, and uh, we don't have to go to, uh, some uh, asymptotic quantities. Uh, we can see that uh, on diameters that are, uh, so here, uh, about uh, 1,500. Okay, so this leads us to some conjecture. Uh, so it's really uh, open uh, that, uh, so uh, instead of this D of T to the six G minus four, it seems that we have something that is linear uh, uh, in the upper bound on, uh, in average, uh, a logarithm. So this raises many questions. So first, uh, so our experiments are only for genus two, but since uh, all the ingredients that we are using uh, are defined for higher genus, we, we have the feeling, say, that uh, this holds also for any genus. Um, 
And uh, of course, this uh, raises uh, many questions. Uh, so if you have, uh, again, any suggestions, then we, they will be welcome. Uh, and uh, I'd like to thank you for your attention, hoping I was not too long. Um, well, thank you very much. Thank you. So, of course, questions or suggestions, if you can solve our issues, it's even nicer. <laughs> Any questions, comments? So, Monique, um, yeah, thank you for that very lovely talk. Um, yeah, was, once you start talking about the connectivity of the triangulation graphs, this is both in the abstract case and the uh, and the geometric case. Um, a, a, a question that the computer scientists would often ask would be whether um, you have a, a rapidly mixing Markov chain. And it may be that something is already known about that. Maybe Ileana, I don't know something, for example. Um, At least I don't know, so. But that might have a bearing on, on your experimental 